of Vivian Chariot's win at the Frankfurt Marathon. Thanks for that. So we started off on a good note, but want to go back to a top story today that we're keeping our eye on, and that is what's happening with the Independent Electoral and Boundaries Commission that is all set to announce its final tally of the repeat presidential election. However, speculation and criticism already mounting on the voter turnout from Thursday's poll. Rita Tanina has been crunching the numbers for us from the BOMAS of Kenya. Rita, good evening. The chairperson has just issued a rather interesting statement defending his numbers. So where are we with the numbers? Still not clear, Yvonne, as of today, the chairman trying to defend his tweets, which have created a lot of confusion. On Thursday, polling day, at 9.30 in the evening, he came out uh, to say that there was a 48% voter, uh, voter turnout. This was during his second press conference on that day. He had earlier addressed a press conference around 3.30, and when he was asked about the voter turnout, he said they were still uh, computing the figures. Interestingly, Yvonne, earlier we had been told the essence of the KEMS kits. Once you log in your fingerprint, it is meant uh, to pick up that statistic. So by 3.30, nine and a half hours since polls began, the commission was saying it was still tabulating the figures at 9.30 on that same day. Then he came out to say there was a 48% voter turnout. But hours later, on his Twitter handle, he posted a tweet and saying that the 48% was the best estimate turnout from the team. Latest actual figures from 267 constituencies show 6.5 million Kenyans turned out to vote. To many Kenyans, Yvonne, perhaps when you're talking about a voter turnout, they would ordinarily calculate uh, such a turnout against the total number of registered voters. While the IEBC this time is using a different formula, it is says it is calculating the voter turnout based on the number of uh, voters in a particular, let's say, several constituencies against those who turned out to vote. So Chebukati is explaining the 48% voter turnout. He says on voting day between 4 and 5, just before polls closed, uh, the team took a snapshot. Uh, the KEMS kits, 17,000 KEMS kits, uh, registered 4.4 million uh, registered voters who turned out to vote. And he says in those 17,000 KEMS kits, there are 9.2 million registered voters. And so he says they calculated the 4.4 million uh, voters who turned out to vote against the 9.2 million registered voters uh, in those 17,000 KEMS kids. And he says that's how they arrived at 48%. Then he tried to explain his other tweet when he said that there were 6.5 million Kenyans who turned out to vote. And his explanation was that at 10 p.m. on the 26th, after polls closed, they had another uh, snapshot the commission looked at the figures again. And by then, he says, the KMS kits, 33,000 of them had reported figures. And he says, by then, they were showing 6.5 million uh, people turned out to vote in those 33,000 uh, areas covered by KMS kits, in which they have uh, about 16.2 million registered voters. So he says 16.2 million registered voters against uh, the 6.5 who turned out to vote, that gives a 40% voter turnout. Today, he could not give the figures as of now, what uh, the KEMS kits in their portal indicating 37 uh, KEMS kits have sent in their information. But it says, as of yesterday, 36,000 KEMS kits had indicated that 7.5 million registered voters turned out to vote against 17.6 million registered voters in those areas covered by the 36,000 uh, KEMS kits. Uh, you would say a bit of confusion there, but the IEBC chairman is blaming the media. He's saying they focused on the 48% that he announced. They also focus on his tweet uh, which mentioned about the 6.5 million registered voters but did not talk about his other subsequent tweet in which he said that as the stations get network as his, it says please note that as more devices get sufficient network connectivity and report the turnout figures get updated uh, to correspond with those stations so Yvonne the chairman trying to uh, clarify settle that controversy interestingly uh, interesting rather times for him most definitely very tough times for him but many are asking the questions why has the commission been uh, communicating as often perhaps as it should when he issued that 48 percent voter turnout only later to try and clarify through his his twitter handle Yvonne maybe uh, some questions there Yvonne
Right. I mean, speaking about his Twitter handle, you did raise this question during a briefing yesterday about the clarifications on his Twitter handle. Rather interesting that this wouldn't also come out in the official Twitter handle. Is that correct? That was a question I posed yesterday. By then, it was uh, Commissioner Abdi Goulier who was responding to questions from journalists. And when I asked, is, this, is it the chairman who posted that tweet? Why wasn't it on the IEBC Twitter handle? And the commissioner said, well, I've not seen that tweet. And I remember saying the chairman is here. He can answer for himself. But it also raised the question, if the IEBC chairman then posted that tweet which other commissioners were not aware about. Was it a collective uh, figure that was discussed by the commission, was informed by figures being uh, uh, updated by the officials? If the other commissioners, commissioners don't even know what the chairman is uh, tweeting about, fair enough. He has his own capacity. He can tweet. He can give information. But is that information agreeable among all the commissioners? Today, Yvonne, during his press conference uh, at around 7 p.m. Uh, today, there was that question that was posed to him uh, before the polls. He had held a press conference just the day after Commissioner Rosalind Nakombe resigned and during his statement he said he was also feeling that his hands were tied. There were various issues. There were divisions within the commission. So many questions also are being raised. He said that as of now, he can guarantee that the process, the election was above board. He says the questions and concerns that he had were already raised. You would ask uh, which questions were this, which concerns were this, who, to whom were they raised and what was the response exactly, Yvonne? Yeah, that's interesting because did he allude to what may have changed between when he made that statement saying he could not guarantee the country a fresh, uh, a rather a free and fair and credible process between then and now? Because we do understand that he went to the Supreme Court before making that statement to seek clarification on the minor K uh, interpretation of that uh, appeal ruling. But so did he give an indication of what has changed, who has answered his questions, allayed his fears, and now gives him the confidence to run a fair process? Well, he didn't. He just said, I had issues, I had concerns, I had questions, I raised them, they were uh, sorted out, they were answered, but he didn't say what those concerns were, he didn't say who answered them, he didn't say what, the, what was the procedure in sorting out those issues, you would say in less than two weeks. If there were major concerns, which ones were, were they, um, how were they sorted out, was it a process, what, was it about uh, legal issues, what was it about, was it personnel at the IEBC, was it about the commissioners and the unity in the commission if there were any divisions were they sorted out remember during that statement when he issued that statement he was actually alone of late though we have seen that the commissioners are acting together issuing press statements uh, together so maybe the issue of unity was one of them but coming to the the tweet that only the commission the IEBC chairman was aware of then you would still ask uh, several questions the issue of clarity the, he tried and explained today that why this process is taking time is that they want to be sure they want to be thorough in the verification exercise exercise. This is after he sought clarification from the High Court. The High Court uh, sort of upheld a ruling by the uh, Court of Appeal in which it had said the IEBC chairman as a national returning officer cannot do anything to the results. He cannot add a comma, he cannot audit, he cannot uh, do anything to those results as announced in the polling centers, those results are final. But what Chebukati will have to do once those results have been verified, once they have been confirmed, if he notices any errors thereof, he will make sure that he announces when he's declaring the final results, he will have to make a statement and say, this is what I noticed, but still go ahead and announce the results. His lawyers in court, when he was in court at the Supreme Court, had uh, tried to raise the arguments, asking, so what if there are any errors? Does the chairman still go ahead, announce the results with those errors? And in his ruling, then the court says it is something he will have to note before making uh, the final announcement, announcing the presidential, the winner of the presidential election, which now even looks maybe will be happening tomorrow. As of now, the commission says it is only one constituency that is yet to bring, the returning officer is yet to bring results to Nairobi. They say they hope that will happen by midnight. Right now, 265 constituencies 
returning officers from those constituencies have brought their forms 34 and form 34b here out of those 259 have been verified uh, the turnout valid votes 7.5 7.4 of those are going to Uhuru Kenyatta with a 42.23 percent uh, voter turnout so Yvonne we are hoping that by tomorrow everything will be done in uh, the display that they have been displaying here in the last two hours of the 47 constituencies according to the IABC statistics it indicated that Uhuru Kenyatta had also managed to garner 25 percent uh, in 33 constituencies that is with the requirement that anyone who uh, wins the election should have 50 percent plus one as well as 25 percent in at least uh, 24 constituencies so we'll be keeping an eye on things for you it seems that the commission here has called it a day when they addressed the press at 7 p.m., they had promised that they would be coming back at 8.30 to issue a statement on the way forward. The journalists had raised several questions. One of them is about the repeat polls in the 25 constituencies in which the election was postponed. Bearing in mind, Yvonne, tomorrow rehearsals get underway for the KCP exams. On Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, uh, pupils will be sitting those exams. The IEBC, according to the law, which has seven days within which to announce uh, the results, has until Wednesday to do so. So what happens? Will the IEBC hold elections in, in the coming three days? unlikely most of the polling centers are also exam centers and it's also highly unlikely that they can be held there and uh, vote counting takes place and the results will be announced by Wednesday not even bearing in mind that the leaders from those areas have said we didn't want this election in the first place right. nothing changes it will not happen so Yvonne will be waiting to hear what the Commission will have to say uh, tomorrow morning on the way forward Yvonne thank you very much for that Rita Tanina that comprehensive report from the National Telling Center at the Bomas of Kenya here in Nairobi indeed we'll wait to see what happens tomorrow and while that is uh, taking